Hi, Mitch Wenger back with another video on data analytics and machine learning. In this video, we'll discuss generalization. Hope you enjoy. Okay, let's get started. What's the best way to predict? What if I just loaded all of my examples into a table, including my target value? Now I can predict the target value for any point in my data set by just looking it up in my handy dandy table. Think VLOOKUP. Now in this case, I will be correct 100% of the time. This approach looks and works great no matter how many times we run our data set through it. It looks like we have a perfect model until we encounter our first new data point with an unknown target value. This new data point may not be an exact match in parameter values with any of the existing feature vectors in my table. All of a sudden, our handy dandy table doesn't serve us so well anymore. If we were using VLOOKUP using the exact match option, it would give us an error. Now, of course, our goal in data mining is for our model to generalize well to the full population of instances including, and especially, those where we don't already know the target value. It's always important to keep in mind that our training data that we build our models from is just a finite, and sometimes a very small, representation of some full population. We want our model to apply to the training data set, but more importantly, we want it to apply to the larger population. Our table of training data examples will rarely do that for us. So this is a problem we call overfitting. Let's dig into generalization and overfitting a bit deeper. Generalization is the property of a model or our modeling process where we apply our model to data that we didn't use to build the models. We're basically using the model now out in the wild with new data. We start with some training data, like you see in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. And usually this training data is some historical data that we've collected or have available in some way or another. We use that training data and perform some data mining techniques on it and select the best model to go forward with. So all of this that we're doing, we call the mining part of the data mining process. So the mining or training aspect of data mining. We then put the model we've selected to use in production. We apply it now to new previously unseen instances and then predict our result. Will we approve this credit application? Will we give them an offer for their expiring contract to stay with us? Will we investigate this transaction for fraud? This whole range of activities is the process of us generalizing specific data to the overall population. And you may remember that, yes, this is called induction. Now, overfitting is the tendency of data mining procedures to tailor models to the training data at the expense of generalization to previously unseen data points. And at its most extreme, we can overfit by simply memorizing the training data. And that's what we did with that example we discussed at the beginning. Now note, any optimization technique, whether it uses a minimizing or maximizing approach, will try to overfit if we let it. So this applies to every data mining technique we'll discuss in this course or in any data mining course you take. As Ronald Coase says, if you torture the data long enough, it will confess. And we find ourselves doing this all the time in statistical analysis. We'll say something like, let's see if we can tease some more information out of this data. And unfortunately, what we often do is we tease something out that may be statistically significant, but in all practicality, it's meaningless. We wouldn't be able to use the coefficient to help us predict anything. Now, of course, some techniques are more prone to overfitting than others. And we will make that a consideration as we discuss techniques from here on out. In addition, as the complexity of our model increases, 
the tendency to overfit increases as well. So for regression, complexity is the number of attributes we include in the analysis. For decision trees, it's the number of branches or decision nodes we allow our tree to have. We'll continue discussing complexity considerations in models as well. So what can we do to prevent overfitting? And this is an area where you could provide a lot of guidance to the data mining effort. Let's examine overfitting with respect to linear functions. Now, when we have a nice, super clean, well-separated data set, creating a decision boundary is easy. SVM and logistic regression create practically the same decision boundary in this case. Now, what happens if we have an outlier? In this first example, we're adding a new Satosa data point that happens to be very close to the VersaColor group. This appears to be an outlier, but the logistic regression line dutifully splits the two data sets, even though it requires a significant move to that line for that single data point. The SVM line, in contrast, only makes a slight adjustment for the new data point. Now, what if the outlier situation is reversed? In our second example, we have a VersaColor example that's placed very near the Satosa group. As you can see, the logistic regression line rotates almost 90 degrees in its effort to create a pure split, while the SVM line, again, only makes a minor adjustment for that new data point. It's clear from this example that logistic regression is more susceptible to overfitting than SVM. We can easily make the argument that the introduction of a single new data point shouldn't affect the model all that much. That new data point isn't really adding much mass, if you will, to the universe of data that's already out there. So SVM brings what we call complexity control into the model training process. We'll talk about complexity control more in an upcoming video. Of course, we've already seen how this can work when we incorporate even more attributes into our analysis, such as the squared sepal width used in calculating the decision boundaries here. Even in this case, you can see that the SVM model prefers to build a nice wide margin rather than cleanly separating the data points. All right, that is it for our introduction to overfitting. Thanks for watching. As always, be sure to check out the other videos in this series.